elementary teachers, we hope that you are doing well and please know how much we appreciate everything you are doing for our students. Janie Galen and I are going to do a quick tutorial on how to take remote attendance for your students who are learning remotely or for students who may go into distance learning. And we will talk about the difference of those two uh, when we get to the attendance portion inside of Skyward. The first thing we're going to discuss is your LMS. And I'm going to start with K to second using Seesaw. We're going to show you how you can go inside of Seesaw to quickly determine engagement and use that engagement as a way to mark them present. And when we mark them present for remote, it will be, what is it, Janie? Remote engaged. Remote engaged. So that's how they're going to be marked as present if they are doing remote learning or if they are going to be in distance learning. So first thing, I go to my Seesaw course. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to journal. And based upon the day I'm going to, that I'm doing attendance for, which is probably the current day you're looking, you will click right here on your calendar view. And then I can see right here that I have 36 items submitted for that day, and that's great. So I'm going to go ahead and click that day. And then you'll notice the submissions that are there with the student's name beneath each submission. This gives you the ability to mark them as remote engaged and give them credit for being present in the remote learning environment. So that's just a quick, easy way to look. Now, the other way that you may look, and this may be something that you're doing uh, very frequently, is you may be doing Zooms throughout the day. You can take attendance during your Zoom. We encourage that to take attendance during your Zoom. But you also may have some students who don't attend your Zoom for uh, a reason, and but you still see that they have uh, submissions in Seesaw. So as long as they have submissions, if they're not present for the Zoom, you can mark them as remote engaged. And if they were present for the Zoom, but maybe they didn't make a submission, you can still mark them as remote engaged. So either or will give them credit for that particular day. All right, teachers who are in grades third through fifth, you are going to look at Canvas for your remote engagement. And the quickest way that we have found for you to determine if they are remotely engaged or present in the remote learning environment is to go to your Canvas course that houses your students and then go to the people portion in your navigation for the course. The next thing that you're going to do and this was a quick time save that we discovered in the process of putting this together, is go to your keyboard and do a control F for find. Control F for find. If you're on a Mac, it'll be command F. So control F, and then whatever day that you're looking for attendance, you'll put it in. So I'm going to put in September 1, and then I'm going to press enter. When I type in that date, because that's the date that I'm taking attendance, if it lights up, that means that that student was remotely engaged in that class and I can mark them as present, remote engaged for that day. Now, I notice that I have a student that is not lighting up and I look and that could happen for a myriad of reasons. One of the benefits that we have with the way we're doing Skyward attendance is we have until 5 p.m. each day to enter in that attendance. If we do not enter in the attendance by 5 p.m., then the next morning for that previous day, for that prior day, if we find that this particular student was present some kind of way, maybe, you know, we ended up seeing that, uh, you know, by 1159 on September 1, they did something, we can mark them engaged. So this is a quick way to get attendance off of student activity in the Canvas course. But maybe they did work outside of Canvas if you don't see them. And it could be that they've read a book or that they've done some type of tactile project that you've assigned to them. Um, if you're unaware of them 
either being in the Zoom with you or having some type of activity within their course, then what you can do is email that student and check in with them that way. And if they respond back with what they have done, you can mark that as attendance too. Janie, if, if maybe email is not something that my students use, what would be another thing that they could use? Uh, you could use a phone call as teacher contact. You could also use, um, if your classroom uses Class Dojo, um, the app where you can send messages, you can use that if they respond to you through Class Dojo or even Remind. Uh, now there are lots of apps that teachers use to stay in contact with their students. And if they're hearing back from their student through any of those methods, you can count them present that day. So it could be activity in your LMS, whether it's Seesaw or Canvas. Uh, it could be email correspondence. It could be remind class dojo respondents. It could even be a phone call. But if it is happening within the day and also Zoom, then we can mark that student present for remotely engaged. Yes? Correct. Perfect. Right. Okay. So, guys, there's a myriad of ways to give kids credit for being active in the remote learning environment. All right. The next thing that we're going to do is Janie is going to show you how to enter in remote attendance inside of Skyward. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to her. Okay, teachers, when you log into Skyward to take your attendance, um, you'll come to this screen here. You'll notice that student indicators are on. O, the blue O, is for online learner. Because that might be hard to find, Skyward added a new column labeled MOI. MOI means method of instruction. Within this column, if you have a student encoded with an R, it means they are a remote learner who chose online learning for a full grading period. If there is nothing in this column, it means that that student is face-to-face. -face. If there is a D in this column, it means that this student is a temporary distance learner due to possibly a COVID quarantine or a family member having COVID. Janie, could we have teachers who have a mix of remote learners, distance learners, along with face-to-face -face learners within one uh, roster? Yes, you sure can, especially at the elementary schools with our hybrid learning plans. We want to refer to this column all the time when taking attendance. And so that really is going to determine how we mark present because if they're absent absent is the same but if they are present either for remote or distance or face to face then how we indicate that is is going to be very specific that is correct okay for your remote or distance learners they cannot be marked present in this column because this column of present um, tea looks at that as present on campus so for your kids who have an R or a D in this MOI column, they must be marked either remote engaged or absent. So you'll see that I've already taken attendance for these three students. And for Greg, I counted him as remote engaged. For Donald, I counted him present because he does not have an indicator in this column and I know he is face to face and he's sitting in my classroom. And then for Mickey, he is a temporary distance learner, and he is engaging with me to get his work done while he's home. And so in that case, I would mark him as remote engaged. Now, teachers, please know a student for a remote engagement can be marked remote engaged present from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. each day. That's what the state determines as a day for that student. I don't expect you to be up at 11.57 checking attendance with your laptop. Um, we're realistic about it. And so what I wanted you guys all to know is that you are going to be able to log in and take attendance for your students until 5 p.m. each day. After that, we have now added the capability in Skyward for you to edit a previous day. So I'm going to log in here and I marked Mickey absent on the 31st because he didn't join my Zoom and I did not have an assignment for him before 5 p.m. But now I've logged in and I see that he actually did turn something in. Maybe he responded to an email from me, you know, around 6 p.m. Or maybe he submitted an assignment after 5 p.m. 
And in that case, I'm going to edit the attendance for this day. And I can do so by clicking on this day. Okay, once I've clicked on that date, it's going to pull up attendance for this specific student, Mickey Mouse. And it shows that I'm going to modify attendance for Monday, August 31st. So I want to make sure that date is correct. Here's where I've marked him absent. I'm going to change that because I saw that he did an assignment or he maybe emailed me or engaged in some way within that 12 a.m. to 1159 period on Monday the 31st. So I'm going to mark him as engaged and then I'm going to click save. And once I have clicked save, you'll see that it has changed his attendance for the 31st in Skyward. I will be able to edit this day, the previous day's attendance, up until 5 p.m. the next day. So today, Tuesday, September 1st, I have until 5 p.m. to not only enter my attendance for this day, but edit the previous day's attendance. If for some reason I need to make a correction for a day before that, Maybe this day has gone past and I need to do a correction. Then we will direct you to use the correction form. All right, so I have a feeling we're about to find this correction form. Yes, we are. I want to show you where to find some other helpful documents um, that you're going to need too. So the best place to go is go to your Google Drive. When you're in your Google Drive, you're going to click on Shared Drives. From there, you will go to Student Services. And we have created a folder labeled Attendance Procedures for Remote Learners. And if you open that folder, you'll see a really great helpful doc for remote and distance learning attendance procedures. So I'm going to open this document. You'll see at the top of the document, I've added a table of contents where it has the definition of remote and distance learners. And then it's broken down by campus, elementary or secondary for you to look for helps. The links are up here at the top too to make them easy to find. So I'm going to show you how to get to that corrections log link, which you will need if you need to make corrections beyond the next day. So I'm going to click on the link here and open it. This remote attendance weekly correction log is a, a view only form. So I've put a little note over here to make a copy of it. So what you're going to do is you'll go to file, make a copy, and then here where it says copy of, you would put your name and then put the last day of the week that you're going to be uh, completing this correction form for. So if it's for this week, the last day of the week is 9-4 and click OK. So we're doing the week ending date for the correction? That is correct. Awesome. Yes. So now you'll see I'm in my own form that I can edit with my last name or Tracy Shea's last name in this case and the date of 9-4. This form can be turned in as late as 4 p.m. on the Monday of the next week. So let's say it's Wednesday now and I need to make a correction for my Monday attendance. I would need to complete one of these forms. So I would put my name. and the class period. For elementary, you can just put homeroom or attendance. So I'm just gonna put attendance period. And my dates of attendance for this week are 8, 31 through 9, 4. That's super easy. You can also type out August or September. However you wanna do it is fine as long as there are dates listed here. So Janie, just to kind of recap, if I see that I have multiple corrections throughout the week, do I send this every single day or how often do I send this again? No, you only have to do this once a week. So you can start this form on a Monday and then come back and continually edit it until the end of the day on Monday of the next week. And then you can turn it into your attendance clerk. But if I, let's say my corrections on Friday, then I'm only going to have one day out of that week, but it goes to my attendance clerk on Monday. Correct. Awesome. Thanks. Um, there are some examples of how to take attendance on this sheet down here. Um, one of them is Edwina makes a lot. Um, she did daily assignments for me on Tuesday and Wednesday. On Monday, I saw that she logged into Canvas 
but maybe she didn't submit a, an assignment, but she did log in. And then on Thursday and Friday, she joined a classroom Zoom. So that's why I would mark her present on those days. For I'm a remote learner, she did it a daily assignment every day, so she could be marked present that way. Will Birdapig, he's a kind of a different example. On Monday, he did a daily assignment. On Tuesday, I saw that he logged into Canvas. On Wednesday, he submitted a daily assignment. And then on Friday, he emailed me about an assignment that he was working on. So I can count him present for all of those times. But on Thursday, he did not make any contact with me. I don't show that he logged into Canvas and he did not do a daily assignment. And so in that case, he would be marked absent. Again, this form is only used to make corrections. So any day that you're not making a correction for, you can leave unchecked. Once you've done this, scroll down to the bottom when you finished for the week and you would type in your name as your signature and you'd put the date. Then you can either print and say this is a PDF and then email it to your attendance secretary or you can go up to the share and share this document uh, with your attendance secretary or registrar for your campus. And by doing so, she will have attendance from you on this week to make corrections, and then she can enter those into Skyward for you. Janie, would you please select the file button? Yes. And teachers, you can also download it as a PDF there, and then you can email that PDF too. So you've got a bunch of options. I want to go back to this uh, form two for you, this Google Doc for remote and distance learning attendance procedures, and just show you that we have the procedures, how to do it in here, what a day consists of, um, what this column is in your grade book. We also have in here um, how to take your attendance and edit a previous day's attendance. Lots of really great things in here with links to all the documents you would need to get your attendance done remotely. All right, teachers, we just want to close out just as a quick overview of what we discussed. Um, the first thing that we talked about is how to go K through second into Seesaw and look for student activity. And then also the other myriad of ways of activity that you may find that both uh, age levels within elementary would have, uh, which would be phone calls. Uh, it could be Zoom attendance, it could be any kind of apps that you're using for communications with your students, whether it's Dojo or Remind. Janie, am I missing any? Um, no, I think you've got them all. If, if they email or phone call, those count too. Yes. And then also, if you're third through fifth, you've got your Canvas LMS to track any kind of activity that's taking place in your course there. So as long as we can count them engaged in the remote environment, whether they are remote learners or they're on distance learning, we can give them credit for that day. And so we, again, we appreciate everything that you do. Janie, we appreciate you and, and Dr. Jackson for everything you guys have done. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Yes, please. Thank you so much, teachers. You guys are awesome and, and you're so appreciated.